We all care about women's safety, and Christine Jardine, Liberal Democrat MP, is trying to change the law to make developers, that's property developers, publish an assessment on women's safety as a condition of planning permission. And today is also the day all restrictions in Scotland have ended with regards to COVID, and Christine joins me now. Good to see you. Happy Easter. Um, just Happy your Gloria. Uh, your thoughts on um, all COVID restrictions in Scotland being lifted today? You welcome that? I do actually. It's it's hopefully we've, it's because we've made progress. We are all still very concerned about COVID, very worried about COVID. And although the restrictions have been uh, lifted, they are still we are still being recommended to use the protections to wear masks in crowded places. And there's nothing to stop us wearing masks going into shops and pubs and things. It does, you know, it becomes sort of um, guidance. So although we feel a wee bit like this is a good sign. We're still concerned that we need to just be aware and not think that we've got COVID beaten because it, it could still it could still come back again. We could have another wave. So just take care. And just staying with Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon has been reported to the police for breaking her own mask laws on a campaign visit to a barber's on Saturday. How serious do you think that is for her? Um, not very, to be honest. Um, that may sound unusual, considering that I'm what, usually a very stern critic of the First Minister. But I think, um, you know, it, it's something that she has apologised for. She made a genuine mistake. Politicians should all be setting an example. And we all do our best at all times. That, well, most of us do our best at all times to follow the rules. But um, this has been explained. She simply forgot for a minute. Now, in the current circumstances, uh, lots of people have been caught out. You get out of your car, you go to go into a shop, you think, oh, I don't have my mask on, and you have to go go back. Um, so I think there's a world of a difference between what the mistake that Nicola Sturgeon has made and the situation we're in with the Prime Minister and you know, the, you know breaking the rules that he set. Breaking, yep. But there's a difference between someone making a, a genuine mistake um, and yes, Nicola Sturgeon should be made, uh, setting an example for us all. But there's a difference between that situation and the situation where you openly, flagrantly break the rules that you are telling other people that they should be following and, and have a party when you're telling the rest of us, not only that we can't have parties, but that we're foregoing funerals, weddings, christenings, birthday parties, the rest of us were for going birthday parties. That, you know, lots of us have, have had to go through grief in this and it just feels like the Prime Minister and the Chancellor of the Exchequer and everybody else who was taking part in these parties was showing absolute contempt for what people were going through. That's the world of a difference. And what tools do you have when Parliament returns tomorrow? There's talk of a motion to hold him in contempt of Parliament or to start a standards inquiry, something that, frankly, you're not going to win because there's more Tory MPs than opposition MPs. Well, there are more Tory MPs than opposition MPs. That's why we're appealing to the Conservative MPs and saying, look, this is not good for the country. It's a bad example. We are in... We are facing a war in Europe. We are not directly involved in the war, but we're seeing the situation in Ukraine is a threat to us all. There's the economic crisis, the cost of living crisis. We need a prime minister at the moment, Gloria, that the country can have faith in, that the country can believe if he tells us that something is necessary, then it is necessary. And we need a government that doesn't look quite as out of touch with the rest of us, with reality. Uh, the reality of the, the crisis that we're all facing, as Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak do. And they're making the government look detached. One rule for them, a different rule for the rest of us. That's not Christine. what the country needs now. Christine, I'm going to interrupt you because I want to use the final question, yes. actually, to talk about the debate that you've secured in Parliament <laughs> on Wednesday to yes. change the law uh, to require developers to publish an assessment of women's safety as a condition of planning permission for major developments. I just want you to give us some examples, if you would. We've got about a minute, I'm afraid, to go. Yeah, briefly, I think we've had so many problems in this country. Um, women are still... I mean, I remember as a teenager the protests about women's safety in the streets. What we need is reassurance. Women need to know that their needs are being taken into account in planning. The government is moving forward with, with the modal code, but we do need some way of ensuring that we can be reassured that it's been taken into account by developers, that there are national standards and things like 
if you live in an apartment block that you know the bin storage is lit that there are no uh, you know unlit facades that there are no places where women are walking where anybody is walking because we all need our safety protected and that's what i want to see is a national discussion look at how we reassure everyone that we are safe in our streets and that every step is being taken because part of that safety will be confidence confidence that we are safe in the streets and we need to know that and I'd love to talk to you about that in more detail as your moves to change the law progress. But thank you for your time today, yeah, yeah. Christine Jardine, and happy Easter to you. Happy Easter. Nice to see you, Gloria.